Chintamani Kaur was born in 1915 in the railway town of Kharagpur. The family had shifted to Kolkata when he was five years old. In the south of the city where they were living, there was a clay modeler's community. Young Chintamuni used to visit the place and slowly grew the fancy to become a clay modeler. His guardians wanted Chintamuni to join medical studies. After a strong difference of opinion with his parents, the young boy left home. He wanted to become an artist. However, a compromise was made and Chintamani was allowed to join art courses. The Indian Society of Oriental Art, established by Obanindranath Tagore, was then a very popular parallel institute for art training. Initially, Chintamuni preferred the sculpture section. But when he came to know that the training in this section required 10 to 15 years, he shifted to the painting department. Young Chintamuni was too passionate to wait so long to become an artist. Assessment of Chintamuni Kaur as a sculptor would be incomplete without a peep into the art movement of the time. Avanindranath Tagore was the Colossus. He dictated terms in the country's art scene. With E. B. Havel, the progressive British principal of the art school, who invited him to teach, Avanindranath introduced a philosophy of personal realism in painting. Indian art was then passing through an identity crisis. The British legacy of art was harnessed in the art school. The native art fraternity was writhing under the mesmerizing impact of Western art. Abhinindranath said that the time had come when the true creative elan should reflect an individualized expressionism. The artist must add a due emotion to the work. Abhinindranath did not advocate any synthesis between Eastern and Western moods. He charted out an expression that gave the artist the freedom to follow a personal agenda. Chintamani was heavily influenced by his teacher. He began to believe since early youth that art was the deliverance of consciousness from the surveillance of instinct. Avarindranath never taught his class by hand. He used to work in front of his students. Chintamani was heavily influenced by this stance of the teacher. He had Khitindranath Mojumdar as another teacher whose influence was unavoidable. Our guru chilen Khitindranath Mojumdar. I have said that the Italian Renaissance Frangelico Tini Chobi Akechen Tar Dormer Shadonad Junne Kitindronato Temni Chobi Akechen Shilpi Sheve Nam Kora Junne Arkichu Prapti Junne Tini Boishn of Shadok Chilen Tini Shay Shadonad Junne Chobi Akechen Tamitari Chatru Added to this was his great faith in the new cultural movement that swept the country under the august supervision of the Tagore of Jorashaku. He understood that the essence of the new movement also lay in unstinted liberalism. Our Bangladesh <laughs> তারা হচ্ছেন উনবিংশ শতাব্দীর বাঙালিরা এবং তারাই ভারতে যে পরিবর্তন এলো প্রাচ্য পাশ্চাত্য সংস্কৃতির একটা যে সম্মেলন 
এসব যে ঘটল সেই সময়ে যারা করেছিলেন তাদের প্রধান হোতা ছিলেন জোড়াসাখর ঠাকুর বাড়ির মানুষেরা এবং তাদের সান্নিধ্যে এইটুকুনি জেনেছি যদি সত্যেন্দ্রনাথ তিনি না আসতেন তাহলে জ্যোতিন্দ্রনাথ হতেন না আর জ্যোতিনীন্দ্রনাথ যদি না হতেন রবীন্দ্রনাথ হতেন না এবং রবীন্দ্রনাথ এবং এরা না হলে পরে গগনেন্দ্র অবনীন্দ্রনাথ হতেন না এরাই এরা কিন্তু ভাগ করে দেখেননি যে প্রাচ্য পাশ্চাত্য সভ্যতা তার একটা মিলন ক্ষেত্র তৈরি করেছিলেন ওইখানে আমি ইউরোপেও বহুকাল কাটিয়েছি এখানেও আমার গোড়াপত্তন শিল্পের এ দেশেই আমি কোনো দিন ওই দুটোকে আলাদা করে দেখতে পারিনি এইটাই ওখান থেকে পেয়েছি আমি তো জানো কারিগরের কাছে শিখেছি যারা পুরুষানুক্রমে মন্দিরের সব মূর্তি টুর্তি বানিয়েছে ভুবনেশ্বর পুরী কোনারকে তা তারা আমার শিক্ষা সেইরকম করেই হয়েছিল তারপরে দেখলাম যে আমি তাদের মতো কিছু প্রাপ্তি আমার ঘটবে না জীবনে সেই জন্য আমি ছেড়ে দিয়ে ছবি আঁকতে শুরু করেছিলাম আমার এমনই সৌভাগ্য বলতে পারো দুর্ভাগ্য আমি ফ্রান্সে গিয়েও যার কাছে পাথর কাটা শিখতে গেলাম সেও সেই গিরিধারীর মতন আমার যে যারা পুরুষানুক্রমে কারিগর ছিল এও সেই রম সে বলে যে তার পূর্বপুরুষরা মাইকেল এঞ্জেলোর সময়ে তার স্টুডিওতে পাথর কেটেছে আর তিনি আমাকে যে নির্দেশ দিলেন সেই গিরিধারী মতন একই কথা গিরিধারী একটা কাঠ দিয়ে বললে ইহারে কাটো আমি কেটে কি করব কিছু না শুধু কাটো তো কেটে কেটে একটা যখন ছোট বল হয়ে গেল তখন পা ভাইস হিসেবে ধরতু পিছলে যাচ্ছে আমি যে আত্ম পারি না তখন সেটা একটা ফুটো করল আর একটা বড় কাটে ফুটো করলো করে একটা পিন করে সেই দুটোতে ঠুকে বসিয়ে দিয়ে বলে আর নড়বে না কাটো তারপরে তো সেটা ছোট্ট একটা সুপুরির মতন হয়ে গেছে আর আত্মকাটা যাবে না ওটা একটা মটর দানার মতন হবে তারও ছোট করতে হবে একটা এখন ওইটুকুই করো খানি কাটতে গিয়ে দু হাত ঘানা হয়ে গেল আমি তো এরপরে ফের ওইরকম করে কাটো ওটা কিন্তু ওরকম দু হাত ঘানা হবে না আমি জিওমানেলির কাছে গেলাম প্রথম দিনেই বলে তোমরা সব ভদ্র ঘরের ছেলে কি শিখবে পারবে না না আমাকে শিখিয়ে দিন বড় একটা মা বলে পাথর এনে বলে এইটা কাটো বলে কেটে কি করব বলে কিছু না ছেনি দিয়ে কেটে কটাকে শেষ করে দাও এক কথা এই তখন এই অভিজ্ঞতা হলো যে যদি মূর্তি বানাতে চাও তাহলে যা দিয়ে মূর্তি বানাচ্ছ তার সঙ্গে তোমার সংযোগ ঘটবে তুমি যেভাবে তাকে আয়ত্ত এনে করতে পারবে তারপরে তো তুমি মূর্তি গড়বে কোয়াইট আর্লি ইন লাইফ চিন্তামণি ওয়াজ কিউরিয়াস টু এক্সপ্লোর দ্য ওয়েস্ট এজ এন আর্ট লার্নার হ্যাভিং ম্যানেজ সাম মানি বাই সেলিং পেন্টিংস টু দ্য মহারাজ অফ ত্রিপুরা অ্যান্ড টু এন আমেরিকান কনসিয়ার he set sail for england but it was not possible to get admission into the royal college somewhat disappointed chintamani went to paris and joined the academia de grand chaumiere The great sculptor Giovanelli's studio was also his seat of learning. 
He stayed in Europe between 1938 and 39, but soon had to pack his bags to return with the heat of the Great War under his feet. Livelihood became an issue and he started teaching art, first in Kolkata and then in Delhi. But the art scene in India was not very vibrant at that time. To survive here as a sculptor was also not exactly easy. From 1940, Chintamani started living in England permanently. Commissioned works and creative sculptures soon gave him a name. He became a British citizen and opened his own atelier in London. He was now face to face with the new artistic trends of Europe. Friendship with Henry Moore, Brown Cousy, and Jacob Epstein became extremely meaningful in shaping his philosophy of art. His young mind was now faced with a dichotomy. If the artist is a socially committed individual, if he has to cater to the social life, his vision should be contextual as much as contemporary. Avanindranath taught the art of delving deep into the soul. The West taught him the art of externalization. Between the two extremes, Chintamani was sort of suspended for a while. Chintamonikor received a silver medal for a piece called Skating the Stag in a competition floated by the 14th Olympiad. The work was done in a Western way. A critic remarked, No wonder that the maker of this art is from the land of Nataraj. This sparked off a new wave in Chintamoni's mind. Was this the way he was viewed? He asked himself. There was a ballet school nearby. A young ballerina was invited to work as a model. Typical Indian attire and ornaments were put on her and the title was The Cloud Messenger. Chintamuni felt that the responsibility to represent his own country was upon him as an artist in England. During almost three decades of his stay in and out of Europe, Chintamani had visited Indian heritage sites and acquainted himself with the sculptural marvels. As he grew in age, the artist was sure that there was no dearth of inspiration in his motherland. A great impact was created upon him by Henry Moore, the legendary British sculptor. I am not talking about the reflection of vitality. In a work of art, there can be an inner strength. This has nothing to do with beauty. A man can be strong without being beautiful. Beauty satisfies the senses. Vitality springs from a spiritual power. The statement of Moore was published in 1934 in a manifesto of British artists. Having followed Moore's views, Chintamani compared the basic Indian concepts of aesthetics with it he discovered that Indian sculpture also had its own exclusivities. In India, the sculptural aspiration had always been circular, which was an opposite of the vertical aspiration of Western sculpture. The Nataraj, for instance, was suspended in a circle. So were other deities. A piece of stone pelted in water created circular waves. This summed up the Indian artist's aspiration. Simultaneously, Moore's views on themes like mother and child or the female form impressed him more. Moore was a child of the war. Moore's reliance on the associational psychological factors in mother and child images were Chintamani's inspiration.
the mother and child installed in front of the Supreme Court of India was Chintamani's tribute to more. Chintamani never agreed to be put into any specific frame as an artist. He realized that art really needed to be momentous. His Buddha figures, which are many, bear testimony to the fact that the artist was capable of adding a dynamism through curves in a static seated figure. In an age swooning under the agony of fastness, the best that an artist could do, according to Chintamani, was to vitalize forms so that they looked like in a movement. The artist returned permanently to India in 1956 and accepted the post of the principal of the Government Art College in Kolkata. Having learnt about his departure, Henry Moore said, India is a great country but is still immature as a nation. By the time your country becomes great as a nation, you will be lost as an artist. Till 1978, he was at the college trying to develop new concepts of art teaching. In the meantime, he had gone back to France and other places in Europe under various scholarships. The passion to live with forms and shapes had never faded for a moment. The female form played an important role in Chintamani's oeuvre. All his life, he had experimented with the rhythm of the female body. Somewhere, the character was in action. Somewhere again, it simply reflected feminine charm. <laughs> 